Ahoy there, mateys! Today on the Save It For Parts channel, we be going in search of space pirates! Arr! Evil men, robbers and cutthroats, the outlaws of the universe. Alrighty, <clears throat> I mean alrighty. Since we don't actually have our homemade spaceship finished quite yet, we're going to be using ground-based radio equipment to hunt for space pirates. And the type of pirates we're looking for are actually space radio pirates. Back in the 1970s, the U.S. government launched a fleet of satellites known as Fleet Satcom. And these were basically orbital UHF repeaters using the 250 megahertz band. At the time, back in the 1970s, nobody else really used 250 megahertz for anything, and the equipment to use that frequency was pretty expensive, out of reach of random people in the general public. The government and the military, in their infinite wisdom, decided we don't need any kind of security or encryption on these satellites, we're just going to have a wide open repeater where anybody transmitting on 250 megahertz up gets it bounced right back down on a similar frequency. Now that might have been just great back in the 1970s, but in later years people started to notice that there were all kinds of consumer products that operated in the same or similar frequency ranges. There started to be issues where the government would be picking up mobile phones in Russia or CB radios down in Brazil. You might argue that the mobile phones in Russia was a feature rather than a bug because, hey, maybe the military wanted to listen to those. But this went both ways because hackers and criminals realized they could use it as well. A satellite placed a little more than 22,000 miles above the equator will take exactly 24 hours for each orbit. Since the Earth itself rotates once every 24 hours, a satellite in this position always stays above the same point on the Earth's surface. Such a satellite can receive and send back messages continuously over an area of about one-third the Earth's surface. And that's how you get space pirates. People are out there using these U.S. government satellites as pirate radio repeaters, sending CB communications, slow scan TV, all kinds of unauthorized transmissions that they bounce around the world this way. Now, actually transmitting anything through these government satellites is still illegal, and I'm certainly not advocating that anybody do it. I'm only going to be listening to traffic on these satellites. I'm not going to be transmitting anything to them. I'm not going to be doing anything unauthorized or illegal. I just want to snoop in on it and see what can I hear on these satellites. Now, I've read that some of the biggest users of this fleet SATCOM network are not actually the U.S. military anymore. It's mostly truck drivers down in Central and South America. They've figured out that some of these satellites are basically directly overhead. If you're on the equator in Brazil or someplace, all you have to do is get the right antenna, aim it straight up, hook it to an amplifier, hook it to your CB, and you've got CB radio all across the country. It doesn't matter how far away you are from anyone else, you're just bouncing it through space. So I'm kind of expecting to hear a lot of foreign language traffic, if I can hear anything at all. Let's jump in and see what we can do with it. Now, I've read that the very simplest way to do this is to pick up a tri-band capable ham radio or portable radio. Now, some people have reported being able to hear uh, pirate transmissions on one of these radios with just the stock rubber ducky antenna. Unfortunately, I'm only getting background static, indoors or outdoors. I'm in an urban area right now, so I think there's just too much background radio traffic on too many adjacent frequencies. So how about a quick and simple antenna hack? We've got a mini SMA male-to-male -male adapter, and we've got the stock TV rabbit ears that come with the RTL-SDR kit. So now instead of our little rubber ducky, we've got this extendable telescoping antenna. Repeat, this is a warning. Space pirates are at large in galaxy. So I seem to be getting some kind of a carrier signal on a few of the most common frequencies if I hold the antenna just right, but I'm not getting any voice or anything that sounds like a transmission. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd think these space pirates are just a rumor. I think we're going to have to up our antenna game a little bit. So I was looking at antenna designs online, and I realized that my little rabbit ears, or dipole here, uh, are just about the right length to be the driven element in a 250 megahertz Yagi antenna. So these are kind of rough measurements. I'm going to try to make this as best I can and then possibly trim it down and tune it with my little V&A thing. And of course, since this is the Save It For Parts channel, we're going to make this all out of trash. So we've got a piece of scrap wood that's basically the exact length that we need. And we've got some random aluminum rods in the scrap bin here. The websites I was looking at said you should be able to build this antenna in an hour for about $20 in materials. I think I built it in 10 minutes for $0 in materials. 
let's see if I did this right. Let's fire up the little Nano VNA, use it as an antenna tuner. Well, we definitely have harmonics all over the place on this rig, but it looks like we're right at 245 on that uh, first dip on the left. All right, we've got that adjusted pretty close to 255 now. I pulled out my DIY Space Cyber Deck on the right there that I finished in a prior video, and this was an attempt to get all of my space-based, radio-based, RTL-SDR stuff into one compact package instead of just jammed into the briefcase on the left. Instead, I've ended up with a briefcase full of junk on the left and a whole other briefcase with the Cyber Deck in it, but what are you going to do? Since it's cold outside, I'm pretty lazy, and I already have a giant hole in the screen to run cables through, which I totally blame you two for. I'm going to go ahead and put the antenna outside and just leave the cyber deck here on the futon slash giant cat bed. So I've jammed my 250 megahertz Yagi onto this satellite dish pointer, which was originally a security camera PTZ, but I've been using it to aim antennas. We've got our antenna set up outside. Alright, so we've got GQRX fired up, we've got our antenna hooked up to the software-defined radio, and we're looking at some of the transponders on this satellite. Those are the lighter bands on the frequency waterfall display there, and we are occasionally getting little blips of traffic on some of these. So I'm going to keep scanning around and see if we can find one that's more active. Well, we definitely seem to have found some kind of encrypted digital transmission, there are still a few military and government agencies that actually use these satellites, so we are going to get the occasional government traffic, but almost none of it is going to be in clear text or clear audio. This looks like another digital data channel of some sort. All right, I am getting a very faint voice transmission. Kind of sounds like Russian, but it's very hard to make out. It probably won't come through on the recording at all. All right, we are finally picking up a pirate transmission. I can't tell what language it's in, but it's definitely something. Hopefully nobody's saying anything too offensive in any of these languages. Now we're getting a little bit farther out of the range that my antenna can handle, but we're still getting some interesting signals. For example, this one kind of sounds like a foreign TV station. Okay, well that actually wasn't a foreign station, that was NPR. I'm not sure why I'm picking up NPR and 271 megahertz. I'm gonna have to look into that a little more. So trying to hunt down these satellite pirates is a bit of a cat and mouse game combined with random chance. For example, right now I'm looking at four separate transponders on this satellite. You'll see on the far right we're getting some kind of a regular beeping or possibly a data transmission. And then on some of those other transponders we're getting just random little blips here and there of probably short voice transmissions. So it's really hard to hear any particular thing on any particular transponder. It's just going to be random when somebody's transmitting and what they're transmitting. It's basically like listening to CB radio, but over satellites from other countries. I think we're hearing people trying to contact each other now uh, using call signs or something. I realized that one reason I can't hear any of these satellite pirates on my uh, cheap handheld radio is that they're all on a different frequency now. Um, I had heard everybody was down around the 250 or 255 megahertz range, which this radio can do, but it seems like all of the active traffic is up in like 260 to 264 now, which is out of the range of this radio. So I'm not going to be picking anything up with this unless somebody happens to be transmitting on a frequency that it can receive. Well, so far my attempts to find space pirates has been pretty successful. We've been able to hear pirate radio users in other parts of the world, including South America, possibly Russia and Asia, but it's really hard to tell. 
a lot of these transmissions are very staticky. I have a hard time telling apart different languages, especially when they're distorted. I even had an English transmission that to me sounded like another language because I was only listening to part of the bandwidth and it was all distorted. Anyway, I think it's pretty cool that you can listen to illegal radio users in other parts of the world using obsolete military satellites and a few dollars in random electronics junk. I'm a little disappointed that I wasn't able to hear anything with that cheap handheld radio, but it seems like the pirates have kind of moved on to a different frequency range on these satellites, possibly due to some crackdowns in the early 2000s and mid-2010s when South American governments and U.S. governments got together to pinpoint some of these pirate users, round them up, arrest them, confiscate their equipment, etc. So there's been a little bit of a chilling effect from what I've heard, but there are definitely still people out there using these satellites illegally, and we can listen in on them from right here in the U.S. Now, am I going to do anything else with this project? Um, I might try to find some of those slow scan TV signals that I've heard about. I don't know if people still do that. Um, if they do, maybe I can track that down. Maybe I can work on decoding some of those. But that's going to have to be another video. I think we're going to think about building a better antenna for this as well. Again, I'm just using that directional Yagi. It's not the best for a circularly polarized satellite signal. So if I wanted to pull in even more stuff with this, I need to do another QFH like I did up on the roof for my weather satellites, or something like an X-Wing antenna, or another circularly polarized system that's going to pick up more stuff and going to have basically better performance on these satellite transponders. But again, all of that is going to have to wait for a future video. We're going to wrap this one up. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed listening to International Satellite Pirates just as much as I have. We'll see you next time.